some powerful words from Jesus in the Gospel today, this invitation uh, for us to remain, to remain in Him. What we're hearing is from the 15th chapter of the Gospel of John. It comes within the context of Him celebrating the Last Supper with His disciples. So it's on the night right before He gave His life for them, for us. So it's like His last will and testament. He's begging them to remain, to remain in Him as He wants to remain in them. And as you heard, the stakes are kind of high. He says, um, if anyone who does not remain in me will actually be thrown out like a branch and wither. And those branches will be gathered and they'll be cast into the fire. So it's kind of a matter of like life or death. Like how do we actually do this? And how do we remain in him? And he says, without me, you can do nothing. And I've prayed with that a lot. I'm always like, well, maybe I can do something, Lord, just a little bit. But I'm more and more convinced, actually, uh, if it's going to bear any fruit at all, it's got to be him, beginning, middle, and end. Like, it's actually true. Without him, we can't bear fruit. It's, it's just not going to get off the ground. It's not going to be what he desires it to be for us. So his constant invitation, remain, remain in me. That was the core of the gospel today. And that first reading from the letter of St. John as well, talking about abiding, remaining, remaining in the Lord. A very helpful acronym that I've heard uh, that's really just helped center me and root me in this truth is remain in me, R-I-M, RIM. And it refers to relationship, identity, mission. R-I-M, Relationship, Identity, Mission. Also the first letters for remain in me. So to remain in the Lord, we got to get our rim right. Relationship, Identity, Mission. So the biggest question for us, uh, whether we know it or not, where we live from is, well, who am I? Like, like what's my identity? Because depending upon how we view ourselves, it, uh, it, it conditions how we actually live and what we actually do. But we have to actually stay vertical, relationship, identity, mission. So we actually have to uh, stay rooted in like, who are we in our relationship with God? Like, how does God see us as a beloved son, as a beloved daughter? And that frees us up to actually live our mission then. We can do that well, we can do that poorly, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because we know our identity is actually rooted deeper. It's actually rooted in our relationship with God, that no matter what, I'm loved, that I'm a beloved. It's really easy to flip that and to live M-I-R, where our mission uh, is what makes us uh, root our identity, and then relationship comes after. So this is sometimes the way we can actually, unbeknownst to us, live a lot of our life where we're measuring our success and who we are based off of the external factors of, of how well we're doing. How well is Father Sam doing? Well, does anybody like his preaching? No, they don't. Okay, I'm doing terrible then. But actually, that's not the measure. Like, our, the way we're being received or, or our mission, that doesn't actually, uh, it can, if we, if we allow it, it can say something about our identity, but, but it's, it's backwards. It's, it's this, ver it's this uh, horizontal horizon. I think of a lot of athletes, especially like really famous athletes or Olympic athletes, they have this mission, like their mission is to like win gold <laughs> at, the, at the Olympics. And some of them, uh, very like tragically, they don't actually win gold. And then like you have the interviews with them after and they say, my life is over. I don't know who I am. My whole life has been geared towards this. I have no identity outside of this mission. And it's actually kind of sad to think about because there's another, there's another way to live. We don't have to live mission, identity, relationship. We actually can flip it, stay vertical. Like, how does God, our relationship with Him, actually root us in the deepest, deepest truth that we're actually loved? That we're beloved sons, we're beloved daughters, and that frees us up to live our mission. So kind of a simple acronym, but when I heard this um, in seminary, it was really foundational for me, and I've had to keep going back to it. Um, and I've been struck just how easy it is for the verticality to flop <laughs> horizontal again and to live mission, identity, relationship. 
And even just a couple weeks ago, I had the gift of being uh, in Chicago, I'm beginning a, a training program to become a spiritual director with uh, 150 other priests from all across the U.S. And this whole week was just on the basics of prayer again for us. Like, how do we pray? And it was all around this. Like, how do we stay vertical? How do we live as priests, as Christians, with relationship being the most important thing, our relationship with God, rooting who I am as a priest, and then from there the freedom to live, to be able to give. So I just want to hold that up as this beautiful core of Jesus' gospel, to abide in him, to remain in him. R I am, remain in me. To actually to think about the rim. How can we let our relationship with God be the foundation that really centers us in our identity so we can be free to live mission, whether that's really well or really poor or somewhere in between. It doesn't matter because we're rooted in the most important thing, our relationship with God. We celebrated our first communions this weekend and uh, Jesus' desire to remain in us is really fulfilled every time we come to Holy Mass and receive him in Holy Communion. He actually wants this deep intimacy with us to remain, to abide, to be with us. So as we approach him in this altar, just to let him renew the verticality in our life, that the most important thing is our relationship with God, who he says we are, and how we can live from a free, free space there and to be renewed in that again and again.